I want to give a shout out for um, Google, China, and then also Apple for saving me. I wanted to mention that we have a new, you know, we have a new album that just released, so we're going to have to do some heavy hitting drills next week. Um, so we stop playing, stop playing on the other tracks that we're going to do. First, we're just starting our song two. It's kind of like getting out of bed. I hope that everyone is like getting back to their life. Um, I was a bot for a while and I got to play music. I feel like you guys could do that section of that first part of the song that you guys like. Yeah. Um, there was one issue on the video that I was like, hey, I, I forgot to press the menu key in one of the songs. Um, so I'll have to start it again. Yeah. So I hope you guys caught that. Um, even while I was doing it, I paused and I started started forgetting that I was about to like mess up the song. Um, all right, so what we did here um, on the website, numbers one, three, and five, are properties of that Spanish that that you would have practiced before in your previous math classes. And then on the right side is is the same idea, but it's just math terms. Okay, so. This is a rule of exponents, um, and then I want you to do the same thing, but with a fraction. So in number one, that's called the product property. You're supposed to add these exponents. When you multiply the same base, you add. So the answer to number one simplified is just x to the fifth. So same idea in number two, but we have to add fraction. So I'm going to write, there's a base 5 and a base 5. I don't really want to turn this into a radical and make it the square root of 5 because that's a, that's a decimal. It's no good. So I'm just going to try to simplify this by adding these exponents first. And they already have a common denominator, so this is 4 over 2. Okay, so now it's 5 squared. Now I have an integer, so that worked out nicely. So this answer is just 25. So this is called the product property when we add. This is called the power property. When you have an exponent, parentheses, and then a whole other exponent. The difference is we don't see another base, it's just one base, power of a power. And in that situation, does anybody recall the rule there? What should we do with the two and the three? Yes? This time we're going to multiply. We'll do two times three. So seeing the difference between here where we added and here where we multiplied, that's really important. So this one is x to the 6. And so when I go to go to look at our number base, that is our fraction that we're going to be growing. We're going to multiply 5 over 2 times uh, 2 over 1. So that would be That's three to the fifth. So three and three. Three and three is eighty one. Excuse me. Three and three. Thank you so much. <laughs> You guys want to try the next one? Talk about it in your group. Mm -hmm. 
I'll go to Maria to get travel. Okay. Um, yeah, so now, same idea. This is power of a power and power of a power. But there's um, there's just two, right? So, um, you know what I like to do? I like to put a little one in next to the Y, the invisible one, so I remember um, to use that. So it's S2 times 3, Y1 times 3. X to the sixth, Y to the third. I'm pretty sure I already have half of them. Okay, with numbers, and it's not any different when you do seven and you fill up, but I have 16 to the first and nine to the first, so this would be 16 to the one times one half, nine to the one times one half. So without um, like spending a lot of time in a calculator, like 16 times nine isn't necessarily something I, I, I mean, it's not too hard, but um, applying to both of these and seeing that, wow, that's only gonna end up just being the square root of both of them keeps the numbers in mind, right? There's so many right ways to do these problems. If you choose to do them a different, different way and come up with the right answer, it's okay. So 16 one half, nine one half, um, and now I'm going to pull through um, to turning this into a radical. So if I bring the 2 down and around, it becomes a little index. This is actually the square root of 16. And I bring the other 2 down and around. It's the square root of 9. So now it's 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay. Um, and so some of you guys might be saying, well, Mrs. Baldwin, you did that the long way. Um, because here, 16 times 9 is 144. And then the square root of 144 is 12, right? Um, so, and, you know, a calculator does it all in one step if you put this in. But this is just breaking down using properties of x and y. Um, which, the better you can do it, the unhappier people can live with it. No, I'm going to do it right now. Oh, did I just show you guys this? Here's two more. You guys couldn't see these before. <clears throat> so um, here's the quotient property. And then that's it. So if the if we can recall the quotient property, the two things have the bottom and the two top exponents. So I'm going to do 6 minus 4. So this is x cubed. Um, and so with numbers, sometimes that, that same property can be useful. So this would be just 1 big 4, 5 halves minus 1 half. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Can you guys see those tiny dots on the bottom? Yeah, it's not bad. So um, for the freshmen in the room, when you had the assembly on Tuesday, Wednesday, I showed a video about a scientist on bioacoustics. Did any of you see that in Schoology? Um, I later in the day decided to create an extra credit assignment based on that video. So let me show you the assignment really quick. This is posted in Schoology.
Oh, this is not updated. All right, you guys, so if you did not see the video, if you were not in class Wednesday, it's called the scientist video. You need to go back and watch it. Um, here's the extra credit, because I didn't tell you guys about the extra credit, right? Okay. I decided this later in the day. Um, it's worth um, five points, which extra credit points are much different than optional points. So it's like getting a five out of zero. So if you ever got like a 75 on a test, five extra credit points is like getting an 80. Okay, it's the whole thing is a point system. So um, my due date for this was Wednesday because you guys have a long weekend. Um, but you guys are hearing this two days later than everybody else. So um, if you say, well, Miss Lowen, can I have till Friday? I probably would like to do that. I want you to, first off, you have to watch the video. And then I want you just to Google a little bit of research. What is bioacoustics? Put a definition down. And then you have two options. Um, the movie Avatar 2 has um, a bunch of examples of bioacoustics in it where um, like humans or even the, the avatars or the, the blue people um, are listening or using animal noises. Um, so if, if you can describe um, two examples from seeing that movie, um, or if the movie is not your thing, if you could just think about in your community, like right here in Palmetto in your neighborhood or walking to school, ways that humans listen um, for the noises of like nature and animals and insects and how that helps us like make decisions or um, the way we do it all the time without really thinking about it. Write about um, an example of us using bioacoustics in our community. And then the last thing for the extra credit assignment is to list two schools, post-secondary. Violet, do you know what post-secondary means? Post-secondary? Do you? No. So like um, high school is typically referred to as secondary. So post-secondary. What I mean is colleges or universities. Two colleges or universities that actually offer courses in bioacoustics. Okay, so just research that. Any questions? Okay, so this is posted in school, this is in school. Okay. All right, let's start the assignment. This is Tuesday's assignment. Did I text this to you or not? I just didn't check it. Did I check it? I don't know. Okay. So the only people I really need to see this from is the first thing I read. So I'll get to that if you need it. Okay. So I'm skipping this. I don't want to waste time. I don't have too much to read on here. Okay. Um, yesterday, um, in the video I posted, um, I talked about this rate of uh, differentiation. And then I did these um, problems. It was here that I actually had an error on uh, number 18. Um, whenever you do an even root, you have to use a plus or a minus sign. Okay, so I'm going to fix this right now for you guys. So um, this would be written at plus 5 equals plus or minus the fourth root of 16. x plus 5 is plus or minus 2. And then you do two equations. x plus 5 is a positive 2. x plus 5 is a negative 2. x is negative 3. x is negative 7. So, um... There are four problems here, and the only one that requires a plus or minus is, is number 18 because it's an even root. So everybody just think about it. Like, obviously, maybe you can get it right. Especially because what I'm finding to be the case in this set of problems is you just don't know it, and everyone. All right, now that 17 is good, I'm going to come back and make sure this, and then um, 
I know. So let's do these two right now. Okay. I want to see how our first session sounds um, because I didn't go over with you. I just showed a video. And I know not everybody watched the video based on the number of viewers. And Haley, do you have the problem? You ready? You got the even? That's what we're doing now. Are you ready? Okay. Here we go. Be able to cube root 25 unless I also cube rooted 40 because I can't just pick and choose what I cube root. So if I cube root the entire left side, 
I can cube root the entire right side. And, and honestly, I don't want to cube root 40 and 25. Okay, so there's one step I could do to prevent me from having to cube root both. Ashley? Let's get that 40 out of there first. So in the end video, I call this isolate the X term. So you guys have to monitor yourself in terms of that. Okay, start working. There you go. Okay, so moving over. X to the third is negative 15. And so many of you right now are thinking, imaginary, imaginary. We're not supposed to root a negative, imaginary. However, um, it's an odd power. So we're going to draw a cube root to cancel it. And it's okay to cube root negative number. Okay? You don't need an imaginary here. So it's cool. Uh, cube rooting a power of three are perfect inverses. It's like saying I'm plus than three and minus than three at the same time. It can't solve. So this just cancels everything out, and I have x by itself is the cube root of negative 15. Now I'm thinking about 15, and is it a number that I put in the list? Is it a power of 3? Was it something that we keep it? And it's not. So I'm going to have to hit a calculator with 15 because I'm I'm not really sure about it. So if you watched the video, I told you to um, put these numbers in a calculator. Depending on the type of calculator you have, you're going to do 3 first, and then you're going to hit 2nd, or sometimes it's called a shift key, and you have to find the the button or the imprint that looks like this. It has an X or an empty box. And then you hit um, negative 15. And so since we're going to a calculator, instead of doing a regular equal sign, I'm doing an approximate sign. Amelia, what is the cube root of 15? Uh, I feel really good about that because the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. So I expect this to be between 2 and 3. So you said what? Negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to round that to uh, negative 2.47. Is this the exact type of answer? Did anybody see the exact type of answer? Did you check this with the printed list I had up here? 2.7, that's how it was rounded. Hey, um, yesterday when I had a lot of time in periods 5th and 6th, I walked around and made sure everybody knew how to do this in a calculator. I'm not going to do that here. Um, please let me know if you don't know how to use a calculator. I'm just joking. Hey, um, on number 38, what is the first step? Maya, what's the first step on 38? Yeah, so this is a fraction here. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so it's over 1 on both sides. Um, so that cancels it, and I have x to the third is negative 213. So that's in the, in the world of the, the math curriculum writers, this is the same concept. We had to subtract 40 first. We had to multiply 6 first. That's both isolating the, the x value. Now I will cube root both sides. x is the cube root of negative 216. And actually 216, I know, does cube root. It's a perfect cube. So x is exactly negative 6. I didn't use a calculator. I have an integer answer, so I have a straight up. But when I go around, I will look it up quick and make sure I keep all my answers in my head. All right, so that was um, the gist of yesterday's lesson. Who's got a question? We're good? Okay. Let's move on.
All right, I'm turning to um, 5.2 now. So I started this already when I gave you the bell work problems that we did. This section's on property, so that's why I, I did those six problems with you already. Um, this is a very tricky section. What makes it so tricky is that there are there's so many avenues to doing these problems correctly. What your brain thinks to do might be differently than what I'm showing, and that's okay. Okay, I want you to know that there's more than one very right way to do this. All right, um, if you look on page 428, this is a breakdown of the properties of exponents that you learned in Algebra 1. This is the eight problems I just did with you. This shows variables and this shows numbers. I didn't cover zero exponent or negative exponent in bell work. So remember, anything to a power of zero is one. And negative exponents that I talked about Tuesday. Some great examples. I'm actually going to skip all the way to the assignment, which is page 433. Number 1 through 18. And I'm going to work the even problems right now. You're going to watch me. Um, and then I'm going to ask that you try the odd problems on your own. Over the week. So, um, I got 12 minutes to do as many of these even as makes sense to you. And it will be here after school today if you just want to get them all done. The second has radicals. So in the first half, I'm going to end my problem with fraction exponents. In the second half, I'm going to end my problem in radical form. So they're they're doing both radicals and, and exponents. Okay. Um,
Mm-hmm. Is that big enough? Can't see what? I'm gonna go like that. Why did you start calling it a mistake? Why did you just call it beautiful from the So this is the closest property. Oh, this is like a double family. Look at this one. Look at that one. When you have the same base in the numerator and denominator, you subtract that exponent. So what I did with all those was the same thing as this. So if you need to go back to those dollar problems, you could do that. You could do examples to make it look like you started on the ones that look more like that. So I'm using the same properties I used with all those. Am I good? Like a hurt duck. <laughs> this negative one third gets applied to the numerator and the denominator because of those parentheses. And that's a power of a power. So that's multiplication. Anybody have questions? Just moving through these properties like this and you got it down pat. Takes practice. Michelle, will you put your phone away? Um, so one thing I did not review with all of you was making an exponent. The making of exponent has to be using the dot in the front end. So I'm actually making the dot at the bottom and the six at the top. Making the six over nine. And then of course it goes to my right here. So this all breaks all the way down to two thirds. Brandon, put your phone away, please. You ready for another eight, Brandon? Have you done eight and a half yet? Okay, you ready? Did you have a question? Oh, sorry, I forgot that. Feel free to text me or stop that. I thought perhaps the math class today has been wrong to some of you. Okay, and as you can see, as these problems build, they get more and more complicated. There's more and more um, exponents, more and more factors are added to the end. So there's two options here. I could distribute this in, if you multiply one half, and multiply negative three halves. Or if I focus inside the parentheses, it's the same base, I can go ahead and add these. Okay? On any given day, I might see some of those. Today, I'm going to add these exponents first. Let's go. So I'm going from two of the same base, one base doing the product property. And there's already a common denominator, so 1 minus 3, negative 2. So this is 5 to the negative 1 inside, negative 1 fourth outside. Power property says we multiply these. 
and I'm also showing like maybe more work than you will and I'm okay with that like maybe you don't need to show this you're just gonna multiply it I'm just doing a little extra there actually you don't yeah it's just like this I'll show you real quick. when I did this I did x to the fifth it's the same idea I just add the powers not changing the base. Yeah, I think it's really common to see a 25 here. So that's actually going to be now a positive 1 over 4. And that's the final answer. These are both cubic. You can go ahead and do just one big cube root. Fifteen times the root of this. So many ways to do this in your life. Yeah, you can always just change the root. Yeah, you can always just change the root. Thank you. 